Okay guys, so in this video, let's see that how do we handle API routes inside the app router. That is the new way of handling API routes in Next.js. So let's go to our Next.js application. So it is a very basic or like a bootstrapped Next.js application using the create next app package. Let me simply start the application in the background. So now to define API routes, what we need to do, like it's a convention to create a folder called API inside your app router and then inside here we can define any route like if you simply want to go to forward slash api we want to get something we can define a route by creating a file here called route.tsx simply like this and from inside this file we can export in a couple of functions here and that is the get put post put patch and delete so let me show you in the documentation so like so we have these functions that is get post put patch and delete which we can export and like hidden options which we can export from our route.tsx file so what i'll do do i'll go to my app.ts route.tsx file and i'll simply export in a function called export async async function called get and then let me come back to the params in a moment and then what we need to do we need to return something from this thing here we do not need to do it the old way that is response dot json or something like that we need to return here next response that is coming from next server thing here so we need to return next response dot json whatever you want to send so let's say that name is like mafia so let's save this and now to hit this api route what i need to do i need to go to either postman or something else but what i prefer i use this extension inside vs code called rest client so it allows me to make http request to my routes here so here what we need to do we created a file called rest.http and to make a get request to my api route i'll simply write a local host port 3000 forward slash api because inside the api folder we have the route.tsx file so if we simply send a request here we see that we should be getting a response back and we get back this response here that is name is mafia so this get function and like before jumping into the parameters that are present inside this get function we can in a similar way we can export in a function called post here simply like this and we can do whatever we want to do with this api route so this would be a post route this would be a get route and in a similar way we can create like put patch and delete and head and options route but i'm simply limiting myself to get and post routes so if we go to our rest client again and if we try to make a post request to that route so let me make in a post request to this endpoint that is api so I would I would get the same uh, thing here or maybe I have not saved in the file here so this file might not have been saved so if I make an a post request we see that we are getting back this message here that is name is mafia so now let's talk about what is present inside this request handlers that is inside these handlers that is get and post so here we have two things we have the request object here that has the the type of this request object uh, object is the same type as the web request api so we can pass in request here and then we have the context here and by default this context only contains the params so let me simply call it params here and let it be of any type so now this request has been extended by next team so we can use instead of this request we can simply use in next request here because it extends the default web request API to contain some more uh, parameters like the cookies, URL search parameters and so on and so forth. So now let's say that we want to handle this post route. So let me copy this piece of code and let me paste it here. So let's say we want to pass in some data here to this post route or post endpoint. So let me go to my rest, uh, rest client here and let me pass in content type would be application JSON and we want to pass in some things uh, some values here so let's say name would be passed in as uh, mafia metal and then the age would be let's say two so we need to get these values inside our api route that is forward slash api so how do we do that because if i simply make in a request you don't see anything but if we go to our route.tsx file so we can go here and we can simply get in the request body by doing const body equal to request dot body we cannot do so 
it would right away give us an error so if we simply log in console.log body watch what happens so if i open my terminal here and let me make a request here so let me make a request here we see that we are getting a readable stream so to get back the json body here what we need to do we need to simply extract it from the request.json thing so we can say request.json and we can simply await it and then we can simply log in the body so if i save this or instead of returning name mafia let me simply return back the body itself that is the incoming body so let's save this and let's go here and let's make a request here we see that this time we get back the same body that we have we have posted here so let's go back to our route.jsx uh, route.jsx file so now let's see that how do we handle the search parameters inside the route so if we go to our rest client here and instead of only api let's say that we pass in name here to be let's say truly and let's say we pass in the age here to be let's say 25 so how do we get these values that is the url search parameters inside our api routes it is pretty simple to do so let's go to our route.tsx file and here from the request we can say const uh, search params equal to request dot next url and this next url is because we have used in the next request here if we have simply used the web request api by simply using request we would not be getting this next url here and here we can simply say dot search param params like this and let's say let's let's simply write like right away take in the name here so search params dot get and we have passed in the name thing here and in the similar way we have also passed in the age here so let me simply get in the age url search parameter and finally let me simply response back with the name and age thing here so name and age by getting it from the url search parameters so let me save this and let me go to my rest client here so let me make a request here and actually this should be should be here like in a get request because we are handling it inside the get request so let me make a request here we see that we are getting back these values here so you do not need to send these values back to the client but uh, i'm just showing you that how how we handle the url search parameters here so now let's say we want to handle some kind of of a slug here so let's say we have a route here like this so so we have a route called http or let me copy it so let me copy it or uh, we have a route called api forward slash blog forward slash some slug so how do we get this some slug inside our route here so typically to handle these kinds of routes what we need to do we need to create a folder here inside the api folder called blog like this and inside this blog folder we need to create in a dynamic route segment that would be slug like this and then inside this folder inside the slug folder we need to create in a file called route.tsx and inside this route.tsx file we can export in a function called export async function called get and then we have the request which would be of type of next uh, request and then we have the params the type would be any and then we can get in the dynamic value of the slug using this params object here so we can say const uh, uh, slug equal to params dot slug like this and for simplicity let me also log it inside the console that is what is constrained inside the params here and finally let me simply return something that is return next response dot json and let me simply return slug like this so now let's go to our rest line and now let me make in a request here so we see that we are getting back some slug here and if i open my terminal we see that uh, uh, all right so let me make in a request again once again so let me make in a request so we see that we are getting this value here called slug some slug and this slug some slug comes from this from this thing here so from this params thing here so this is what is contained inside the params here so now if i go here rest.http and if i write here comments forward slash 
comment id so how do we handle this so if i make in a request here so let me make in a request here we see that we are getting an error here that is the route is not found so to do this or to handle this what we need we can do inside the slug folder we can create in a new folder called comments and then inside this folder we can call in a comment uh, id maybe something like this that is the id of the comment comment id dot and inside this comment id what we can do we can create in a new file called route.tsx and inside this route.tsx file so let me open it here so let me minimize it so let me open it here so we can paste what is contained here so let me copy it and let me paste it so if we save this and if we try to handle this route or handle or hit this route let's see what happens so if I make it like make a request here, we see that we are getting some response back and in the parameters, we see that we are getting slug, some slug and comment ID is comment ID, which we have passed here. Like the structure of this path is like relevant to this folder structure here. So therefore, inside the parameters, we are getting the whole value of these dynamic parameters. So instead of like responding it with slug only let me respond uh, send back the response at parameters so let me remove this so let's save this and let's try to hit this route once again so we see that we are getting both the dynamic parameters present inside our url by using these uh, this params object here inside this thing here so now let me go back to my index route or the forward slash uh, index api route that is this route so now let me show you a couple of more things so let's say that we want to handle some kind of authorization headers inside our request so let's try to use this route let's keep it very simple so we want to pass this route an authorization header with a bearer token let's say so bearer and some jwt token something like this so how do we get this authorization header inside our uh, route that is this tsx file so let's go back to our route.tsx file so what we can do let me comment out this stuff from here or let me delete it so what we can do we can simply say const auth header equal to request dot headers dot get and here we can simply pass an authorization and for simplicity, let me simply send back the auth header. So typically you should validate this header and if the uh, header is valid, valid, then you can like proceed ahead with the request. Otherwise you can simply uh, response it. Uh, you can throw in an error like 403 or something like that. So the, uh, let me go to rest.http and let me simply send in a request here. We see that we are getting this auth header bearer some JWT token, which means that we are able to extract extract this authorization header inside our route.tsx file by doing request.headers.get. Now in a similar way, we can also handle cookies. So let's say that your front end sends in some kind of cookie. So let me pass in a cookie called foo equal to bar and we want to get this cookie with the name of foo and value of bar inside our backend code that is inside our route so it is pretty simple to do again so we can simply say const cookie equal to request dot cookies dot get and we know that we want to get a cookie with the name of foo so we can simply get it like this and then if we simply log in the cookie so console.log cookie uh, let's simply send it back again because it is more clear so let me simply send it back so cookie or otherwise we can also log in the name that is the name of the cookie and the cookie dot value and this is an optional thing here cookie because this might fail because if you have not passed in the correct name or even if the cookie does not exist from the request so it might fail so they, therefore it is an optional value here so let me save this and let's go to our rest.http and let's make in a request here we see that we are getting back the cookie and in the terminal we see that we are getting the whole of the cookie as well as the cookie name and the cookie value here so this is how we can handle cookies so now let's see one more thing about these api routes and that is using uh, that is the revalidation of the api route 
so let me simply like comment out all of this and we want to hit this index route for the api so for now let me pass in an empty object pack so let's say we want to get data from an external api which has some limitations about that uh, about the number of requests you send to that api because it's a third party api so what we can do we can cache in the request and that uh, that fetch request to that third party api would not be uh, would not be triggered on each and every request on your server so let's say we have a response here so const response equal to await and we are using fetch here and we call this api endpoint that is the github search users api endpoint so if we simply send back this response or let me get in the user here so const user equal to await response.json and then we simply send back in the user here or whatever data it is so if i save this and if we go back to our rest client we see that we get back this data here that is the total count which is coming from the github api and we see that we are getting something in terminal so let me minimize the terminal size here so we see that we here have cache miss but what we can do we can cache this fetch request that is that is this request so that is this request can be cached by simply passing in a parameter here called next and here we can pass in revalidate to be 10 that is the result of this fetch request would be cached by next.js so that whenever a new request comes to this get endpoint in our case that would be forward slash api whenever a request comes to that get endpoint this the cache result of this fetch uh, fetch fetch call would be used inside the response here and after 10 seconds this request would be again revalidated so if i go to my rest.http and here we see that initially we had cache miss but watch what happens if i simply send a request again so if i send a request we see first time cache miss but if i again send a uh, send back we see that we are getting cache hit which means that initially there was no uh, data for this request that is for this uh, endpoint but the next time when i hit this route we are sending back the data of this fetch endpoint api endpoint and we are getting cache hit here so if we send again we see that we are getting cache hit so if we send again we see that we are getting cache hit so this is how we can uh, we can like uh, cache the data using the fetch uh, fetch api using the third party apis and in a similar way if you are not using fetch then maybe i'm not sure you can you export in a constant here called revalidate equal to 10 so in that case like your api calls to your database may be also uh, cached so guys that's all about this video and this is how easy it is to handle all the http verbs inside your api routes though it is not mandatory to use api folder here you can simply create in a new folder called whatever folder here let's say that uh, blog or uh, let's say user and you can also create in a file here called route.tsx and here also we can export in that function called the get function so let me copy this function from here and let me paste it here and let me remove all this stuff from here and let me simply res.json user equal to one two three and let me import next uh, request and next response so let's save this so what we can do we can we do not need to use forward slash api always we can directly hit that user's endpoint or that user endpoint so let me show it to you so let me remove all this stuff from here and if we hit user we should be getting a back or response user one two three but now since it is not inside the api folder so you might be tempted to use a page.tsx file here so page.tsx simply like this and let me open it on the left side so page.tsx and here if we export in a function called uh, uh, user page simply like this so this is a server component because it is inside the page.tsx file but watch what happens if i hit this endpoint so if i go to this endpoint 
we see that we are getting an error here and that is because we cannot have a page.tsx file and a route.tsx file at the same level inside any directory. So either you are going to have the page.tsx file or otherwise you are going to have route.tsx file. So therefore it is always a better idea to simply nest your folders inside the API folder because like you are not going to use the API endpoint for any other thing apart from the APIs. So guys that's all about this video so if you like the video do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel do hit the subscribe button so thank you bye bye tata take care and have a good day and have a great day